How y'all doing today? Come on, we need that one more time. How y'all doing today? Man, it's so beautiful to see so many black people in this motherfucker, you feel me? Niggas is still out here, still out here rocking, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so this is hell black. God damn, y'all motherfuckers came on a Friday to come see us talk? Yeah! The fuck? Shit is lit, bro. What episode is this? Episode 23 of Hella Black. You, feel you sure it's 23? Is it 23? Y'all tell me. Is Sounds it 23? Right. 23. Yeah, it's 23. Right. Oh, shit. I'm in my Jordan year, nigga. I should have got some Jordans on, bro, but, you know, I got my Air Force. This, you this feel might me? be episode 23. It's 23. Check, check something out. Yeah, it's episode 23. I don't know if 23 is like a special number, but it's a special number for us, because if you would have asked us like a year ago if we'd be doing Hella Black episode 23 in front of a whole ass audience, I would have said no. And this feel like there's not like four people here. I, you know, I was kind of worried, bro. <laughs> I was worried for a minute. I was like, man, I got my cousin Shira here. You know, my other cousin. You feel me? I was like, you know, all my family here. But people fuck yeah. with us the way they claim to fuck with us. Yeah. Because you know, niggas say they love you, but don't really show up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I'm just because it's not a bunch of random ass white people in this motherfucker. Yeah. Like, like no lie. No lie. If there was white people sitting like in the front, I'd tell y'all to please get in the back so black people can sit. For real. Bro, I'm, not, I'm not even joking. Y'all think I'm lying, bro. Because like <laughs> oftentimes black people do shit like this where they like trying to provide political education and um, accessible education. And it'd be hella white people in the front. So I'm excited to see all the white people in the back not taking up hella space. Yeah. Well, it's 2018, uh, motherfucker. <laughs> You know what, so we talk our shit, you feel me? It's no hard, you know, if you were out, uh, you know, you shouldn't take no offense because if you have white tears, we in a drought right now, you feel me? So take your white tears, you know. There's a lot of forest fires in this motherfucker, so use your white tears to water this shit, you feel me? So, you know. Hella black, I'm hella juiced. I want to shout out to um, my cousin Miles, who performed earlier. Yeah, um, round of applause, please, please, yeah. please. Uh, Shy, who was Blake's younger cousin, and like family to me. Yeah, my cousin Shira out here, you know, spitting. Shout out White Dave for always engineering and helping us set up the audio and shit. Um, who was Jacqueline? Making the flyer, you feel me? setting up. Jacqueline for also making the flyer, that was good. Yeah. And just everybody who pulled up to support us, I appreciate that shit a lot, because without y'all, there is no us. Shout out to the Patreons, nigga, for sure. Hey, shout out to all the Patrons, you know what I'm saying? Hey, you feel uh, me? <laughs> We're here, some like dog water. There's a little Patron in here, you know, but that got some more Patron in it, you feel me? But we, we here rocking. Episode 23. We live, we black, we still at it. Yeah. God damn, there's hell motherfuckers in here. Yeah. That shit, that shit crazy. Like usually we like really tucked in this room, sweating and shit. Like, bro, I really be sweating, bro. Like bringing a napkin in, wiping my forehead off. You feel me? I got a big forehead too. Like I ain't finna lie. You feel me? But like, it's good to see people like right in front of me. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm just rocking with it. As always, um, follow us at Hella Black Pod. Yeah, something that, like that. That's our Twitter and our IG, Hella Black Pod. Yeah, y'all got it for free, so you can at least follow us. For real. Yeah. <laughs> and then what about Patreon? How do you Patreon.com slash Hella Black Pod. We got hella extended episodes, you feel me? Where you can hear us talking more shit. You know what I'm saying? It's a way to support us too, you feel me? A lot of people don't support black podcasters like at all. Like you got all these white people talking all this, you know, whatever. Whatever they talk about. Like, I don't really listen to it, to be honest, you know what I'm saying? But they begin hell with, hell with cheese off it. I'm like, we ain't even doing this for cheese. Like, we just started it just, just on some authentic not. shit. You but know if what we saying? can get some cheese, I'm with it. Yeah, for real, for real. Shit. Especially if it's a lot of white people listening to this shit. That's yeah. a lot of emotional and physical labor. Like, nigga, we had to set up chairs and shit. I ain't finna lie. Yeah, yeah. Like, nigga, that's labor. I, I ain't finna lie. Like, <laughs> if you white in here, you should sign up on Patreon because black labor ain't for free. Hello? Period. Period. <laughs> straight, straight, straight. Fuck you, mean? But you know, I'm glad y'all get to see us in here. You know, you get to see my niggas' waves and shit. You feel me? You know, this nigga, my luxurious locks. You know, if you get seasick though, I think we have some drama meat in the back at the people's breakfast hall. You feel me? You know, so if you get seasick, a little nauseous, you know, don't drink the Hennessy. Take some drama meat. You know what I'm saying? But we got some uh <laughs> got some fire content for you. Yeah, we thing. got some content. We got some shirts and shit. People's breakfast Oakley, you feel me? If you know, I think AB was talking about that. You know, that that will really support the work we're doing in the field. You feel me? We really proud ourselves about being about our actions. You yeah, feel yeah, me? Most day. So cop a shirt that shows support, you feel me? If you buy one shirt, you damn near gonna feed five, six people. Some good food too. Some shit I eat, some like kosher hot dogs. I we ain't out here feeding niggas shit that we would not eat. I don't eat no yeah. pork, so no pork on my fork, no swan on my mind. I ain't aching for bacon. So, you know, we got some good ass. <laughs> we got some good food for people that we feed, you feel me? So we got a we got a good episode in store, you know what I'm saying? God damn, we really How do we start this shit, bro? For real. How do we How, how do, do we, we start, start this podcast? podcast? Yeah.
Come on, Tate. No, yeah, yeah, yeah Black we, Joy for we, sure. We, 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 we definitely going to start with Black Joy. Yeah. Um, Thank you. For, who reminded us? Who said that first? You Taylor. did? Okay, Taylor for sure. Taylor fucking with it. Shout out right. Taylor. Yeah. Taylor also is an amazing journalist, and she just did a feature story on Hella Black that's going to be featured in Playboy next week. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> so like Taylor said, we like to start our episodes off with Black Joy. Shit, um, I gotta think about some shit now. You shit. go first, man. I can go first. So who, like, hey, nah, for real though, who had, who had a Black Joy moment? Raise your hand if you had a Black Joy moment this week. Who wouldn't Cash. mind sharing Black Joy moment? You wanna come up here and share? Smitty, what's up? Come fuck with us. Yeah, come on. Come, come fuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, so Ma, thank you for inviting me up here, brother. <laughs> Lindsay's rolling, whatever you might know him by. My black joy moment actually comes from uh, my grandmother, right? So when we think about our blackness and how we found it, for me, as a light-skinned motherfucker who grew up with a lot of self-hate, I'm gonna just be 100% with it. And how I've learned about like how to combat that, right? Is remembering a lot of the things that my grandma used to say, especially about navigating white spaces. And like, I'm gonna keep it 100 with y'all as a person who really had a lot of internalized racism. Y'all talked about this, and I learned a lot about that in being around people like Roland, right? My grandmother has been the number one antidote, right, of like how I find myself in this world and how I navigate this world. So like all that wisdom, my grandmother suffering from Alzheimer's. So I'm gonna make this, uh, I'm gonna practice some brevity and just say, to see her lucid in a moment and tell me, I'm so proud of you. You're doing what I thought you would do. That shit really tore me up in the best way possible in a time where I needed to hear that most. So that was Black Joy. And I think that yeah, yeah. Uh, just <laughs> in honor of you, invite you up to all that shit. We think, you know, we think it's important to prioritize joy, you feel me? Because this world, this world is fucking wild, bro. Like, for real, for real. I know everybody be going through shit. You know, I be going through shit. You know what I'm saying? Shit, we, shit sometimes shit. we don't even talk about or vocalize, you feel me? So it's, I think it's important, you feel me, to prioritize joy. You feel me? Like, nigga, yeah, we happy. We fucking lit. It's first Friday, you feel me? It's hell with black, you feel me? You and feel it personalize that joy. Like, yeah. nah, nigga, this is black joy. It's black joy, not white it's joy. It's just for us. I don't, don't want to hear about no white joy. Today, white joy is every day. Yeah, bro. For real. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, white joy, bro. Come on. We ain't gonna speak on like, you can just go across, like, walk, walk across the street and, like, you got white a red joy carpet come out for you. Damn, that's my joy. <laughs> All right, well, is there is there anyone else that would like to share a Black Joy moment? You know, me and B don't want to take up too much space. Is there anyone else that got something they want to share? No one else before we get into our Black Joy moments? Come yeah, on, fam. come on up. Pull up. You can say your name. How's it going, everyone? My name is Christopher. I'm from LA, Inglewood, California. Inglewood. Oh, the dead lungs. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, my black joy moment was uh, I saw the Warren G concert. Oh, uh, shit. Uh, He's uh, over there, two stepping two. It reminded me a lot of home, you know, Inglewood, Long Beach, all that. And um, it just felt really good. And I went during the work night week, and I typically don't go out. And I'm like, I have to. So uh, it felt great. It was like reminiscent of childhood. So. Sure. Yeah, I think throughout this entire process, we want to make this this whole um, experience as interactive as possible. So there will be moments where we want to, you know, um, engage the crowd and not just sit up here and talk at y'all. So we definitely gonna do like a Q and A portion at the end. So if you don't feel comfortable sharing in the early moments, hopefully you at least say something that moves you to where you want to come up here and, you know, ask a question or something like that. Yeah, if you fuck with something we say, you know, snap or some shit, clap or some shit, talk your shit, you feel me? If, if you don't like what we saying, just keep it to yourself, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> also, yeah, before I even forget this, before we get started, I think AB already um, said this, but like, this is a very inclusive space, and the shit that we about to say tonight is in alignment with the gay liberation movement, the trans liberation movement, uplifting all black women. So if that's some shit you can't get down with, you know, the back door is right there. Feel free to leave me behind you again. Just want to make that very clear. Very, very, very clear. But we also, we also want to make this a place where you feel me, people are learning. You feel me? So like, don't be afraid. You feel me? It's like, people talk about safe spaces and shit, but this should be like a brave space. So if you ain't heard some shit we talk about, ask somebody, you feel me? Come ask us after, we will explain it. You feel me? Like, we really try to use accessible language to the shit. Cause people, you know, I work in, you know, college and shit, bro. Like people using big ass words to describe yeah. simple ass shit. It's like, bro, if you can't explain that shit to your grandma, what the fuck is that theory? What the shit is, what's that shit you talking about? You feel me? Yeah, so like, that. for real, like we want, we want to build community. So if you see somebody, you feel me, you ain't never seen before, introduce yourself. Like, 
that's how you feel me like they know liberation without community yeah facts. and if we ain't know each other like how the fuck we gonna really you know like fuck fuck mayor shaft you know fuck all that shit bro for real for real <laughs> <laughs> all right so i can say my black joy moment was this past weekend they had high road day Damn, and I was, talking, shit, bro. Yeah, I was talking to my cousin Miles before this and it's like I guess like over the last couple, not I guess, over the last couple years, of course, the black population in the East Bay area has been declining rapidly. And it's like, I would say with Juneteenth Festival early in Berkeley, earlier this year in Berkeley, that was like a time where I got to see hella black people just congregated in one space. And um, I don't really get to experience that shit every day. I I've been living in the same area pretty much my entire 26 years of life. And like over these last couple years, like I said, shit has just been declining. So I feel like with High Road Day and Juneteenth, which is a I really feel like I took a step back in time where I got to be around just hell of black shit. It was fucking crazy. Like seeing Richie Rich perform, that's what I ain't gonna do. <laughs> and like hella older motherfuckers that's easily yeah. could have been for me. My moms, my granny, my auntie, my grandpa, my uncles and shit. Like that shit was beautiful. And you know, motherfuckers love Oakland. They love black Oakland until it's really time to love black Oakland. So, you know, seeing all them people out there, that was definitely a black joy moment for me. Straight up, straight up. I say high road day too, just, you feel me, going stupid, you know, shaking this, shaking this shit, you know what I'm saying? Um, but also just like finding my own peace just by myself, you feel me? I think black joy is collective, but sometimes I gotta be by yourself. So for me, just, I just get on my bike. Sometimes I just need to ride, bro. Just, you know, hit hit the freeway and shit. And that shit just be like, it centers me, you feel me? So I be, I be going through my shit, I'm like, fuck it. I need to get out my, I get out my bed, yeah. hop on my bike, you know, go a little too fast, but you feel me? With fast. Stay dangerous, you know what I'm saying? Hella Black Solid. episode 23. 23 live in the motherfucking town, you feel me? Yeah, we done recorded yeah. hella places, bro. We done recorded Now we are Oakland. Places. That's, we that's Oakland like, I'm fucking with it. For those so, that don't know, hella Black is like oh just a fucking. Yeah. That's my great auntie. Make sure she get a seat. For real, for real. <laughs> How you doing, auntie? <laughs> Yeah, um, for those that don't know, Hella Black has no, I don't know what to call it, like no format, no structure. We use, me and Black usually just get drunk. It's either Patron and Hennessy and we just talk our shit. Yeah. That's what we're gonna do tonight. We have like a little brief outline of topics we wanna touch on, but hopefully y'all just rock with us and that's how it's gonna be. Yeah. Now I'm looking at you right now and I'm looking at your fit and I think this is a perfect segue talk into our first topic. What's the first topic about teach? Teach my me. nigga Colin Kaepernick and this whole hey. Nike shit that's going down. Yeah. And I know some of y'all is clapping, you know, and that shit is, I commend Cap 100% because I can't think of a time where I had to like fully sacrifice everything that I believed in, sacrifice to my well-being and the well-being of my family. Like I, I know Cap is taking care of the people with that money that he was making. And that's yeah. something that I can relate to, like using my, my income to take care of the motherfucker. So I can't think of like a moment where I had to sacrifice my income. Mm -hmm for a message and you know I would hope I would like to think that if that I, that situation is ever presented to me that I would make the right choice but it's also important that we don't just let Nike get off the hook with this shit yeah, yeah. for real you feel me yeah, yeah. cause Nike on some fuck shit I ain't finna lie I got some forces on this shit made by and Nike. I got on some Air Max you, you know, know so it's like, like it's the perfect <laughs> example of like capitalism always wins there's no yeah. ethical consumption under capitalism exactly but just like letting y'all know that like do not give nike a pass with this shit because these motherfuckers still got <laughs> sweatshops see, popping off hey i ain't gonna lie nigga. i see some people tweeting like hey is this the time to invest in nike like, <laughs> like, nigga, like what, what the fuck you just put a black person on nike you put kaepernick and serena you're like oh shit i should buy some nike shit like i should invest hey. what the fuck like four years ago they was doing 30 percent off for law enforcement like in the height of the Black Lives Matter movement, you feel me? Like, and I'm when sure shit they was got really popping off. in prisons and shit. You oh, know, of course. Sure that, All that yeah. shit is correlated, you know? But like, shout out to Kaepernick, you feel me? He was really standing in for what he believed in, you feel me? But a lot of people kind of came at him kind of foul. I'm just like, bro, nigga, you, you on Twitter right now tweeting about this shit, bro. Like, Twitter ain't gentrifying the Bay Area. <laughs> like, Twitter isn't the central, you feel me? Like, really displacing people. Like, you ain't got some Nike socks on that's like a little off color. Yeah. It, it's, <laughs> Yeah, it, it's so layered, bro. And if you think about, um, I think oftentimes, right, especially with like black folks, with us being caught up in our own movement, with anybody that's caught up in a liberation movement, it's easy to get caught up in um, situations and issues that pertain strictly to you. But like we talk about liberation, right? When people like to idealize, uh, idealize the Panthers, like they had a movement that was like inclusive of all people, like all power to all people. So you think about what's going on with Nike and us not giving them a pass strictly because they backing someone who was speaking out on essentially what was started out as like 
police brutality against black people, right? That was Cap's original stance, right? So you talk about Nike backing someone who was speaking out against police brutality against black people, but also having these fucking sweatshops popping off wherever the fuck it happens. I don't know if it's in fucking Thailand, wherever it is, but um, it's also like going back to what the Panthers talked about, it, like it's either all of us or none of us. So although Nike might be backing somebody that's you know speaking out against police brutality against black folks, they still got sweatshops and shit popping off in Thailand. Like that could easily be, that could have easily been us. Roles could be reversed real quick. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like it's important for us not to give Nike that pass. Right. And we live in a time where fucking it's this climate where like doing the politically correct thing is like can easily be monetized. Bro, people be making that coin off Black Lives Matter. I ain't even finna lie. Like, Black Lives Matter been fucking monetized, bro. Niggas is crazy if they don't think that the decision that Mike, that Nike made wasn't a business decision. Oh, for sure. Like, it, it has decision. to be more profitable. You know, black folks was hella happy. Like, you feel me? Like, oh, facts. Kaepernick is on this shit? Yeah, like, oh, yeah, we going. We going. Still, it's like, it's like, like Hennessy. You know, Hennessy had the first commercial with black people. Was shit, we ain't here drinking facts. Hennessy. <laughs> like, I ain't finna lie. You know what I'm saying? But, like, it's important to judge people by what their actions are and not judge just an individual. You feel and me? the Cap whole action. Capitalism is a system, bro. Like straight like that, it's a whole it's a whole system. It's not just Kaepernick, it ain't just Serena, it ain't just my Air Forces, you feel me? It's a whole economic system, you feel me, that's taking advantage and making hell with white people money. You feel me? Like we gonna invest in Nikes, bro, with that's that's a bad stock to buy it just in general. Like I ain't gonna I'm gonna keep it lit with y'all. Don't buy that shit for real. I feel hella many like critiquing these niggas while fully decked out with that shit. <laughs> I swear, like I'm like, damn, should I say this shit? But, but I think that goes it goes back. I feel, it goes back to what we're saying. There's no ethical consumption under capitalism. You there is me? none. Like, no bro, ethical consumption under capitalism. I could try to buy some shit, but it's like, bro, like my Nikes is fucked up. My, Somebody got extorted to make that. My shit iPhone, out. nigga, that was from some child slaves fucking mining some minerals in Africa. You feel me? Shit, I don't even want to know. You know, but the hair products I use, bro, that shit probably on some fuck shit too. Yeah. To your wave brush, you know? It's just, <laughs> it's all <awesome. laughs> Yeah, it's no lie. So yeah, it's important that like, but with Nike, though, know, this isn't the first instance in where some shit like this has happened. So I just, you know, I, I want y'all to be conscious of, like all of us to be conscious of, like when somebody, when a, a system like Nike and a, a company like Nike makes a move like this, just know that it was still, the best capitalistic move at that time. Right. It's, there's no underlying message like, okay, we're trying to support black liberation, we're trying to support black movements, we want to support. You ain't never heard nobody from Nike come out and speak against police brutality. I can't recall that. Or I can't have recall. a campaign against police brutality. I've never seen that. And you got to realize that's what Cass' message was from the get go. So for them not to come out and speak strictly or um, intently against fucking police brutality, you should know that this move was made in efforts to boost them stocks up. For real, for real. Fact. But Cap a real dude though. You That's a real like, he, He's really gave a million dollars back to the community. Like really community organizations, you feel me? So it's like, if anybody gonna get that cheese, I'd rather be Cap, cause I know he ain't gonna cut off. You yeah. feel me? Cap is like one of those niggas who for sure knows the difference between like reform and revolution. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like if y'all wanna back this revolution, go ahead. You feel me? It's gonna backfire on you niggas. Like I'm all for it. If Nike wanna give me a hundred million, go ahead, nigga. You ain't gonna like the result. We feel like <laughs> <laughs> chopped up. You feel <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, uh, Locked up. Come on, man. Yeah, y'all just be con y'all just, you know, it's it's important that we all be um cautious and conscious of the people that we put our trust in. Like, don't let Nike Fool you and don't just believe some shit because it's some like a black person. Like Spike Lee. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's that's a rough one. Y'all, some of y'all like, ooh, hey, don't these niggas, niggas talk like about that. Spike don't Lee. talk about, hey, uh, don't how, let how many, that nigga, man. Yeah. How many of y'all niggas uh, seen Black Klansmen? By Charlotte Hands. Raise your hand. I saw that shit. How many of y'all just yeah. fuck with Spike Lee regardless, even if you ain't seen Black Klansmen? Like, I know niggas like to think like Spike Lee is a, you know, a solid down to earth nigga, but y'all should know that this nigga just got $200,000 from NYPD to do a media campaign for them. And, and he like, got money from the Navy, bro. He's taking money from the Navy NYPD, to make an ad campaign. The same niggas that was out here stopping and frisking black folks for no reason. Bro, the same NYP NYPD that chucked Derek Garner out to death. And this nigga made a movie called I Can't Breathe, but he gonna take $200,000 from NYPD? That shit crazy. If you take money from the police, what does that make you? We Hogan, what does that make you? Thank you, hello. The police fucking fat, a snitch. <laughs> you fuck with them niggas, you duck with them niggas. Don't hello. But that's what I'm saying, not all your skin is your kin. For real. Really not, bro. You can't like, trust all black folks. For real. Especially especially that one light skinned nigga that everybody love. You oh, come on. Hey, before we get there, hold on, right? Okay. Like, oh, <laughs> hey, I wanted to say like sisters, but get in the time. Like you could never like, bro, you can't trust no black person that wanna work within the system. You can't 
no person in general, but like, you know, I think a lot of times we like to give skin color a pass, right? So any black, like, you gotta think about it. Bro, but we really need black cops, bro. Come I know. On. We need a lot of black shit. <laughs> but think about it though, since like, we, we think about like slavery, right? Like, nigga, it was black overseers. Uncle Tom. You feel what I'm saying? Like, nigga, Straight up. <laughs> was black overseers the solution to ending slavery? No. So, it's systems that we trying to Was black to slave patrollers a system to end slavery? Fuck no. I don't think so. So why can we trust any black person that's trying to integrate into a system? You can't. Take the it from system don't function the way it's supposed to function. You feel me? Straight same up. way the plane was designed to fly. The same way capitalism is designed to oppress and marginalize people. Oh, y'all better write that shit down. He's just giving us a fucking game. <laughs> like, I don't know. You know, niggas just be saying, you know. Oh, shit. Back bro. to Op Lee. Back to Op Lee. But Spike Lee, you know, everybody loves Spike Lee. I, I ain't gonna lie, I fuck with some Spike Lee movies and shit. Man, my nigga Bamboozle, that was my shit. Malcolm X? Huey P. Huey P. Newton story? That was my shit. Spike Lee got a lot of hits, bro. Um, I know my nigga did Dizzle. What's that? Um, he did, um, thank you. What's the shit called? He got game. He got game? Come on, my nigga. Spike got classics. I don't give a fuck how many movies you write. You fuck with the police. You, you are, are a fucking, fucking op. op. Period. Point blank, bro. You <laughs> Straight like that. You op. shouldn't trust him. Oh. Bro, he, he's like, bro, I need to get another season ticket to uh, the Knicks games. That's why he took the NYPD money. <laughs> I'm just confused. Yeah, you got, you got a question? question. Go ahead. So, explain the campaign that you were campaign. It was essentially to get more, like, black people to be police. It was supposed to make a diverse uh, a like adverti an advertisement yeah. to get more police or more black people to be police. Yeah. So uh, that's like propaganda, yeah. you feel yeah. me? No, I get what you're saying, nah, 100%. We for sure not gonna chastise you nothing like that, but are you asking like our opinion on that? Or like why we see a problem with it? So. I mean, yeah. I think the first thing would be that black cops kill black people at the same rate as, same rate as white cops. And we can send y'all some sources that show that, like, uh, there's an article that we have in here. It's like a big ass link, though. Is this which one is the Google link? Is this nothing we got it to here? I don't think so, but we can so, send you some. You, you just like you can just nah, for real, yeah. Like, yeah. You know, anything we say, don't don't believe it straight. You feel me? Like, not not like don't believe it, but like you research our research. shit. You, you feel me? It's like so research this, what we say. Yeah, there's a study that we found on Google. I thought that it was added to this fucking um, one cheater here, but there's a study that we saw that said like a black cop is just as likely to shoot uh, um, an unarmed black person as a white person is. So how is more black cops the solution if they're going to take the same actions as white cops? And for us, we like, we analyze the police as a system. You feel me? So we see the police as a system that hasn't changed in slavery, right? So the first, the first cop was a slave owner or a slave patroller. Meant if a black person ran off the plantation, they finna go get the black person off the plantation and bring him back to the plantation. You feel me? The first sheriff, the same exact sheriff star, it's the same shit we see today, right? So we see we see policing as a system, right? So even if anybody, like you could have good intentions, right? But all right, I'm gonna go change things from the inside. But you go into the system and it's like, okay, it's black cop versus the white cop. Which is essentially like, you know, the topic of reform that we talked about. It's literally impossible to infiltrate not, I'm gonna say impossible, because like if you do infiltrate and you do change it, that's not reform, that's revolution. So it's impossible to like work within the system and have different results. You can't, it's, it's simple cause and effect, at least in my perspective, right? Like one plus one is always going to go two. The car is gonna drive the way. So it's like, if you drive in a car, I'm driving a car. It's gonna function the same way. So whether that person in blue is black or that person in blue is white, that person in blue is yellow, that badge is gonna operate the same way that it's designed to operate. That's why we've had white police chiefs. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Yeah. We can talk. I'll see you know what's happening. Yeah, but we're going to get to that later. We're going we gonna to speak on that. Yeah. We're talking about systems. It don't matter what system, whether it's education, whether it's uh, prison, whether it's police, it don't matter what system it is. It's going to it's gonna operate the way it's designed to operate. And I work in education. That shit. And so do I. Shit. Yeah. I see it for how it is. Like, <laughs> it's like, it's some. Really trying to colonize our own minds yeah. to think about this, think about that. Like, all right, yeah, I'm finna go, I'm finna go to college and get a nine to five and work at Goldman Sachs, but I'm finna forget about my community. I don't know, but yeah, no, I appreciate your challenges. We got, we got questions, but I damn near want to save them to the end. But I also don't want y'all to lose y'all thought. So I don't know, like, we it's hella black. We really don't give a fuck, so it can go however it wants to go. <laughs> but it's so if you want to ask your question right now, if you think it's like pressing, you should go ahead and ask it. We had a hand right here. I don't know. Both of y'all had hands up. It's, I don't really, do you care? I really give a fuck. All right, go ahead. I want to know your personal opinion on black people that signed the 
My pro- I mean, you should probably, I'm sure you got that from what I just said. <laughs> Not even being funny. I don't fuck with police at all. Yeah, I would say, like, I got one of my closest. So what do you yeah. say about black One of my closest, one of my closest friends is a cop. One of my closest friends asked to come here. I said, you can come, but you can't wear that, that shit. You know what I'm saying? And you can't talk. <laughs> you for sure can't arrest nobody. Like, I mean, I, I feel like some cops, some black cops have good intention, but for me, it's not about intent, it's about impact. I don't give a fuck what your intentions are. It's about the impact that you have on the community. So I feel like a lot of cops, you know, a lot of black people, because we, we talk, right, and it's, it's also perpetuating the same system that, you know, marginalizes and oppresses. They tell us, like, I think that's, like, one of the, um, the reoccurring themes of white supremacy is, like, integration. Like, if you do this, this will happen. If you, come and join our, if you come and join our system, things will change. So they tell us we need more black politicians. We need more black DAs. We need more black people that essentially help this system function. So it's like, we see that happening. You got black DAs right here. We got black, we got black police officers right here. And I, I posted a tweet, like, a, a month ago in Chicago and it was the caption was like, we just need more black police officers. And it was this black man beating the fuck out of a black pedestrian. A black police officer beating the living shit out of a black citizen. So it's black like- Black man showing up for the white cop. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, like it's, just, it's literally a system, bro. Like if like you get in there and they're like, there are fucking rules and ways that things work that you just have to abide by. And if you're no longer operating by them rules, for one, you're not gonna last long, for sure. Like that's just, they have a code that they live by. You can ask anybody in blue, they have a code that they live by. So you're not gonna last long. Or you'll never, you'll never even make it through to, to be able to put your blues on, 100%. I had a cousin that signed up for that shit. My nigga White Day was thinking about being a cop and just was not fucking with it once he saw what it really was. And I think if you look at the like, case of Freddie Gray, you had a whole bunch of black cops who arrested him. Nigga, in the, the, in the, the case of black. Like, what the fuck was Obama saying about free. Freddie Gray? What the fuck was Obama saying about Mike Brown? Mike Brown, he was like, oh, these thugs in Ferguson need to pull their pants up. But was and then just stop riding. What was commending them white kids when they was fucking... No, but then he's over here like praising Rahm Emanuel in Chicago, the mayor of Chicago. Like, oh, Rahm Emanuel, he was such a great mayor. What the fuck? Tell that 16 shots. Like, what the fuck? So again, tell that to, tell that to who? That's my auntie, yeah. You, you can ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you can tell. That's you can tell where I get it from, right? <laughs> <laughs> so basically, you said how amongst black people, basically, like how do black on the continent, how do black, how people, black people police themselves? Police themselves. Well, I would I say we can't even look at Africa without looking at Europe, yeah. right? Because even though Africa might be black, right? You have a might you might have a black face on the system. You still have a neo colonial. It's still a colonized empire. So when I say neo colonial, I'm saying like yeah, that shit's still colonized by white people. But you have a black face at the front of I think we should right. do whatever we was doing before white people came here. <laughs> <laughs> whatever we was doing before white folks came here is what we should get back to. Because I think even the whole thought process and system of policing is some white shit. That shit's just like, uh, I think that's like all a reflection of white people. I don't know my history enough to say what black, you feel me, what Africans were doing before colonization to police and control themselves. Uh, but I'm sure it wasn't with these white people. But like I, I went to South Africa and that shit was that shit was hella mania. It reminded me of America, like because it's 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 apartheid, right? It's segregation. So it's like you go to shanty towns, you see black people. You go to the rich areas, shit that look like San Francisco, you only see white people in South Africa. And these white people have the fucking nerves to call themselves African. Like Ellen, what's his name? Ellen Musk or some shit? Is that his name? Elon from Tesla. Yeah, that Tesla ass. African. He, he tried to like, oh yeah, I'm from South Africa. Nigga, you white, bro. Shut up, like. But I think a lot of it in Africa is still colonized, right? So if you have educational systems, you have a lot of missionaries too. You know, you have a lot of school systems that are founded by like white missionaries. So it's like you indoctrinate the mind. If you can't, if you can't free the mind, what you gonna do with yourself? You feel me? So I think a lot of it is just the indoctrination that a lot of Africans face. So it's like if you hide people from your uh, your history, you don't know your true history. Just like we don't know our true history. You read a fucking textbook in fucking fourth grade, and that's just saying, oh, black people immigrated from Africa. To be workers, what the fuck? Like real, for real. That shit really be saying that shit. Some textbooks in public schools, especially from Texas, nigga. Yeah, <laughs> you, get a te- you get a history textbook from Texas, them niggas. Yeah, you know what's happening. Um, and I will also look at like look at most of the reasons why we need police. It's all a result of capitalism. You feel me? 
Motherfuckers being poor and not having enough resources, so they out here taking shit. Mental hospitals being closed down, so people not getting the, 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 the treatment that they need. So I think even though, I think police are just a result of a capitalistic society, of a white supremacist society. They so, the gate, in my opinion, they the gatekeepers of white yeah. supremacy. So like, even if we look here in Oakland, if we look at Oakland school police, Oakland school police only started once black people started migrating from the south to Oakland. And why did they start? Oh, we got a bunch of black kids in these schools. So we gonna have police for schools? Like, what the fuck? Like, we need we need police for like fourth graders, third graders. Should have said. But we don't have any mental health counselors. And in Oakland right now, they're cutting fucking free meals for school kids. But how much money is the police making? In the city of Oakland, half the budget goes to the police. What the fuck is the police doing besides harassing people? Sex trafficking. And that's where the money is going to, but it ain't going to the teachers. Why aren't teachers making six figures, but 5 who don't, you know, they, all they have to have is a GED and they're making six figures. And I think those are questions we should be asking. Facts. Those are some questions we should be moving about, you feel me? Because if we ain't moving about it, this shit gonna keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. They cutting sports teams. Why the fuck, like, bruh, that's why I fucking hate capitalism, because that shit be taking hell of money on my motherfucking check. <laughs> First of all, like, bruh, I could, I mean, I could go to Ruth Chris a little more if it, <laughs> it wasn't taking money off my check, you feel uh. me? It's taking money out of my check and it's going to what? The fucking police. So I could say fuck 12 all I want. But, you but my money is this? still going to that fucking pig outside. Yeah. Who probably listens to this podcast. Yeah, fuck OPD, I said that. I know they listen to fuck Co into a pro. I'm my mama. No, we stand. <laughs> you know what we stand for. I think the whole, not I think, I know the whole gist of everything that we said is like, it's important that we um, analyze systems and understand how they function and how they work and understand like it doesn't matter who's at the head of the system, the system is gonna function the exact way that it's designed to. So it don't matter what black people we put in power, if they try to make a capitalistic system function, it's gonna function the way it's supposed to. And you know, all skin folk ain't your kin folk. Who, who coined that term? Y'all know? It was a black woman. Mama and Zinger. Like, sure like, I, I don't wanna give it to Crenshaw, but I, bro, it, it was for sure coined by a black, by a black woman. Oh, sorry, no, yeah. See, I don't know what AB just said, but that's a black woman, right? Zer Neil Hurston. Nigga, I can't hear. I got these motherfucking headphones on. What the fuck? Zora Neil Hurston. Let's say that together. Like I said, it was a black woman who coined the fucking term. So give them their motherfucking props as hey, always. We, we, we gonna we gonna say her name. All right, let's do it on three. One, two. Three. Zora, Zora Neil Hurston. Boom. Say her Black name. women make the world go around as usual. You know what I'm talking about? Shout out Zora. But yeah, I think that's a good segue to talk about just like, people talk about freedom. Liberation. I talk about freedom. I, I want talk liberation. about Y'all niggas want liberation? Read that shit. You know what I'm talking about? Damn, that shit was quiet as fuck. Maybe niggas like the system. I think a lot of us like it more than we like to admit. Y'all niggas like want freedom? The niggas want liberation. That's the question. Yeah. I yeah. would hope so. All right, shit, me too. Damn. Fuck. So we do understand that, like. I think I'm out of God. I, I gotta go, bro. It's some Fez in here. <laughs> Fez watching. God uh, damn. This well, is sweet. Fez did a sweet. Yeah. Oftentimes, when we think about liberation, though, I feel like we, we know what we know. And what I mean by that is we know the system that we know. So oftentimes, we try to recreate the system that we know, right? So a lot of people be like, hey, bruh, you feel me? We gotta get liberated. So I'm just gonna only spend black. Hashtag buy black, bruh. I'm finna just boycott. Like, how do you boycott capitalism? For real, like, you go to your grocery store, hey, is it, hey, was this fish black on? You just need Black Wall Street, bro. Hey, is that- Black Wall Street is the, is the answer. I don't give a fuck. Black Wall Street, nigga. That's all we need, bro. As if black folks wasn't still poor in fucking Tulsa. As if they didn't bond them niggas. Hey, yo, money is not- Hey, but bro, if you just, if you, <laughs> if you just pulled your pants up, bro, we would, we would probably be okay, bro. Just pull your pants up, nigga, you'd be all right. Where's bro, if you just, hey, bro, if you just bank black, bro, for real. If you get a black credit I'm card- I'm trying to tell you, if you get this rush card- Rush card. <laughs> and you get direct deposit, oh, it will shit. stop the police from stopping and frisking you. If oh, more niggas God. banked black, instead of buying Jordans, we'll be all right. I'm trying to tell you, come on, man. God damn. Don't, we just playing. I hope y'all don't think we believe that shit. <laughs> if y'all niggas just stop buying Louis belts uh, and invest it into the community, I think we'd be all right. Yeah. Be, how, how much how much dollars you spend on fucking Jordans, but you don't invest in your own property? <laughs> you know, niggas be saying some wild shit no, about niggas that. Say like, shit like that. Niggas bro. like, oh, bro, if you niggas if niggas just stop buying Jordans, Mike Brown might not have been killed. 
Like, Bank in black is one of the biggest myths. But when I was younger, like I, I kind of believe that shit. I'm like, yeah, the black dollar would just solve everything. I recycle the black dollar, bro. We spend one point three billion dollars every year, bro. Why until can't we recycle I, it? Until I started getting some money <laughs> and I realized motherfuckers around me are still poor. Until I started getting some money and I realized that motherfucker still is going without food and shelter. Until I started getting some money and realized that shit wasn't gonna stop me from getting pulled over by the police for the color of my skin. Did you show her the Harriet Tubman though when I mean, they were I showed them that I had a job. I showed them that I had a nice haircut. For real. <laughs> no, ain't stopped nothing though. But I think the big, like, just a few, you know, statistics, like the five largest white landowners own more land than all black people combined. Like five, bro, that's, that's one fucking hand, bro. So five people really own, five white people own more land than all black people. But we're supposed to like somehow just like, oh, save your money, don't buy Jordans, and we could all of a sudden just be like white people. But this land isn't even white people's. Nigga, we on Ohlone land, bro. We on Native American land right now. This, this land ain't ours. You feel me? This is Native American land. Facts. You feel me? So it's like, they own all the wealth, but why would we want to do the same shit they want to do? Why would we want to have, okay, why would we want to have like a black president if it's a black president of a fucking empire, nigga? Like over 180 military bases throughout the world and Obama was the fucking person dropping the bombs. I don't care if the bombs is black, I still ain't fuck with bombs. Free Palestine, you feel me? Free all the, you feel me? That's free right. free everybody yeah. that's oppressed by America. Cause like, one thing is like, yeah, black people were oppressed here. Our labor is used to oppress, you feel me? Like our labor is used to build like all this capital, all this money so the US can be on some bullshit. So like, I ain't finna be like, nah. Like, oh yeah, we'll support Israel. No, fuck Israel. That shit has no, that has no right to exist. It has no right to exist. That's the Palestinian people's land. Facts. You feel me? And it's important for us as black people to pay attention to like what's going on in the world. You feel me? And being be in solidarity with other people, you feel me, who is being oppressed, but like if they on some fuck shit, some anti-black shit, I ain't fucking with that. I mean, yeah, you, you look back at the Panthers, like Huey and them niggas was going all over the world, tapping in with the people who was the most oppressed and marginalized from they uh, respective countries, right? So I, like I say, a lot of people, especially Bay Area folks, Bay Area black folks love to idealize the fucking Huey Panthers, bro. Like they love, they love Huey. doing that shit. I, I didn't see motherfuckers, the most homophobic niggas with pictures of Huey on their backdrop. I was like, did you read Huey? Like, do you know this nigga's politics, right? This nigga was saying like in the 60s and 70s, right? Aligning the Black Panther Party with gay liberation movements. Huey was aligning himself with any liberation movement. Anything that was anti-white supremacist, that nigga was fucking with this shit. Anything that was pro, and anything that was not anti-black and that was anti-white supremacy, the Black Panthers were fucking with, period, right. point blank. So we look at a time right now where we trying to organize for liberation and freedom. And it's important that we link up with people across the globe, bro, because there's somewhere in another country, there's motherfuckers like us. They skin might not be black, but they going through the same oppressive shit that we going through. It's motherfuckers, not even across the country, it's motherfucking white people out here who can't see past their skin color that's going through the same shit that we going through. Bro, like, Poor as fuck, <laughs> living in trailer parks and shit. Like, we driving through Yuba, you feel me, and I see a Confederate flag, I'm like, bro, your house hell of fuck up. Like, nigga, you live in a shanty. Bro. Your nigga, shit is like, a shack, bro. bro. Like, your shit is dirt as fuck. Nigga, you got a fucking Confederate flag, like, bro. Like, my gold teeth cost more than your fucking house. Type shit, bro. You yeah, ain't nigga, fucking like, bro. You know, <laughs> that was a little bit elitist, but you know. That was hella elitist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, fuck. But they still be like, oh, yeah, fuck you, black people. Like, awesome Confederate shit, you know? But there still be some poor ass white people. But, like, why are they racist, right? They buy into racism as a system for a reason to think that they're better than us, right? Do you think racism will always trump everything else, like classism? Sexism, ableism, do you think racism trumps all that shit? I also think like well, some of those things that I just named are like subsets of racism, like results of racism. I don't think you, you know get separated. They're like, all, oh. I respect, I ain't even gonna say what I'm about to say, but yeah, I get it. <laughs> nah, cause yeah. like, I ain't gonna lie, we hella be using intersectionality the wrong way, but it's love, I get what you're saying though. Yeah. 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 Nah, I, I, I 100% feel you, you 100% right, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But yeah, I think it's, it's all interesting. They're all interconnected. You can't separate race from yeah. class, because of you, who is porous, who is porous. But Black why, people, I, feel like, people. I feel like people try to like separate them and when it's beneficial. Oh yeah, that's because of like identity politics, right? Like Black folks, right? Like, 
Um, I think for black men, for example, and this is like, you know, niggas take this however they fuck they want to, but I think a lot of black men want like black folks to put blackness before race their, first, um, like hey, yeah, race first, bro. Before their sexuality, we're gonna talk about sexuality, we're gonna talk about gender. But you feel me? They don't get it when white folks do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like we can't understand how like poor white folks, you feel me, will put they race before they class, but we can see and understand what we need for black folks to put blackness before everything else, before gender, before sexuality, you know, it's wild to me, bro. Like I said, bro, I think a lot of black folks try to like, um, they don't really own up to how much they fuck with the system as much as they do. And I see it in homophobia and transphobia all the time, bro. Cause that shit is nothing but emulation of white supremacy. Right. Nothing but that, right? Like I asked you this question earlier, I was like, bro, how is it that we as black folks could understand the wrongness and Mistreating somebody and marginalizing somebody and oppressing somebody because of their skin color, but we can't seem to understand it when it comes to sexuality and gender. Like that makes no sense to me, bro. Like we quick to press a white person for some racist acts, but we'll let misogyny war, which is like misogyny aimed strictly towards black women, and we'll let homophobia and transphobia get a pass. That shit like baffles me, bro. I'd be so perplexed and so lost. If anybody got the answer, I'm willing to hear it. But I just don't get how. Like I said, we as black folks can understand racism, but we if, can't understand right. homophobia and transphobia. And if we want to be free, it got to be all of us. You feel mm -hmm. me? How do you say like Black Lives Matter, but have a certain section of black people that you only straight with? Black Lives Matter and only straight male Black Lives Matter, and then after that it could be straight. Because if we look if at we oppression, for oppression it. don't work like that. Yeah. You feel me? Like so, like black men ain't just gonna be free. Like that shit ain't just gonna work. Like like in order for black men to be free, black women gotta be free. Black queer folks gotta be free, you feel me? Black trans folks gotta be free, you feel me? Like, that's why we say it's all of us or none of us, you feel me? Because even then, if, if it is just all black folks being, all black straight males being free, that's not liberation. That's black male supremacy. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's, 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 let's call it Like it. straight up, like you know say what it is, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it's wild because like black queer folks, trans folks, and black women have been at the head of all of our fucking movements as black people. <laughs> we like to use them. You feel me? We like to use them. Like, y'all go out there and risk your lives. Y'all go out there and put in all that work, and then we're going to reap the benefits. That's, that's essentially what we've been doing. And then erase the history. So that's that, some white shit. That's awesome. Yeah, that's some white that's shit. Some, that's that's some, white people love doing that shit. That sounds like some unmelanated shit. Somebody said, yeah. Who said unmelanated? My nigga Cad calls it colorless. Colorless, yeah. That was the funniest shit I ever heard. Colorless. Oh, fuck. So I think the next thing we want to segue into is community work. Hell yeah. Community Shout out to all work. the volunteers that yeah. fuck with um, People's Breakfast, other than that be coming out, you feel pulling me? up with us. Shout out to everybody that's ever donated. Appreciate that shit a lot. Yeah, for real. It's unfortunate, I say this shit all the time, it's unfortunate that we gotta do this work because there's for show somebody who's getting paid in the city of Oakland um, that it's their job to make sure that people are fed and clothed and housed. You know? Yeah, like Ain't Libby Shaft. Like, why does she make probably like half a million a year? What's the point of Libby Shaft if we got People's Breakfast Oakland? That's what I'm, I'm trying to I'm like, how many people has Libby Shaft fed, fed? I've never seen Libby Shaft in the field. I hope ever. I don't see her. <laughs> ever, I've never seen her. I don't even know what Libby Shaft. If you, if like, Libby Shaft could be amongst us right now, I would not be able to point her out. I would point her out. If she was here, I would say something. I, I and I should probably figure out what she's like. <laughs> she's an eye. Yeah. That bitch can get the drop on me. I'm sorry, I only use that to take. Okay, I'm not gonna go to. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> community work. I think it's important to important to be in the community because I think a lot of times when you think about activism, you think about like shit. You just see like oh Van Jones on the TV or some shit like that. You see people doing these speaking engagements and shit. I guess I guess we're doing the speaking engagement. Yeah, <laughs> and that's why. But it's our first one. You feel me? We've been we we really been doing. Free. This yeah. shit was free. It was free, free, free. We didn't charge. We could have easily charged white folks a hundred dollars a ticket and did this shit at New Parish. No lie. And I bet we would have sold that motherfucker out. I promise you. But we want accessible, and our shit is really for black folks. But we, yeah. you know, and we. I think it's important to send it to the like most marginalized. You feel me? Like really in Oakland, you really got people right now living in the streets, bro. Like not knowing where the next meal finna be, right? Not knowing when the next shower finna be. Not knowing where they're gonna get their next clothes from. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like average people too. It's not like people be like, oh, it's just drug addicts. And if Nigga. you say, if you say it's just drug addicts, I'm just also like, bro, those people matter too. You feel me? Like addiction is like a disease. You know what I'm saying? Like, why are we just gonna be like, oh, just because you do drugs, you should not be cared about. 
Like, why the fuck do we spend half our fucking budget in Oakland on the police, but not drug addiction centers? Where people can fucking, you feel me, get rehabilitation services, right? But if you think about gentrification, bro, it's like a lot of us is two or three paychecks away from being out there. Period. I'm lucky enough. I'm, I was about to say I'm lucky enough to have two jobs, but I don't think that's luck. That's damn near. <laughs> that's capitalism. Bullshit, dude. You know, but like, nigga, we was just last year, me and this nigga Blake, I can remember last year in like June. We were stressing, bro. Stressing, like Sweating. down to our last dollars, no job. Like, bro, like, no really, job, really about to split or go to Jack in the Box. Like, you know, you get like two tacos for a dollar. Like, <laughs> like how is niggas finna last? So it's like, for me, being someone that, nigga, my mama was on fucking food stamps, all that shit, Section 8, you know what I'm saying? So for me, empathy plays a big role in why I do what I do. Just because I know for a fact, like, that could, could have easily been me if I didn't have a big ass family. Like, me, I'm lucky enough right now to live with my great aunt and like two or three of my cousins, nigga, we making shit work. You feel what I'm saying? But like, not everyone is lucky enough to have that resource. I met a woman out in West Oakland who's like 70 years old, bro, and she's living on the street, bro. And she's from Louisiana. She has zero family out here. I don't, I don't even, she probably, she might not even have no family alive. She probably got like some great nieces and nephews and shit, you know? But like you said, we all, in this climate, with the way that rent is, we all a couple of checks away, unless you're fortunate enough to have, you feel me? I don't know, they said some shit like, nigga, even $120,000 is fucking low income in the East Bay right now. I don't know, what the fuck so I don't know what you niggas do for work. God damn. There might be some wallers in here, but a nigga like me, you know what I'm saying? If I didn't have two jobs and fucking Patreon. low ass rent from living with my family, <laughs> nigga, I could be houseless. I could be homeless for real. Yeah. So I think that's why it's important. Like when we talk about organizing, you talk about community work, it's like, yeah, protests, they're important. But like, I don't know. For me, you know, I did a lot of black black student organizing, you know, Fannie Lou Hamber Black Resource Center helped like build that out and stuff like that. But I'm also like, what impact am I having on the people that I see every day in West Oakland? What impact am I having on, you know, the most marginalized, you feel me, like most oppressed people under capitalism? What am I doing? Like, why am I walking past people and not doing nothing? Like I felt sick. I, I don't I don't feel cool walking past people and be like, bro, I really ain't got no dollar. You feel me? And I think that's why it's important that we send it the most, you feel me, the people who need it the most, right? If you look at the Black Panther Party, the Black Panther Party, they, their, their first program is a free breakfast program. For kids. For kids. That shit was and now today, you feel me, we have, we literally have fucking budget cuts for the city of Oakland for schools where kids ain't gonna get food. How are you supposed to learn if you're on an empty stomach? If you an adult, and I know like most of us are in here, I've been to work before on empty stomach. Nigga, I cannot focus. Bro, if you ever- I can't get shit done. If you've been around me and Delancey when we hungry. I'm hangry, I'm a hoe. I'm like that nigga from the Snickers commercial. I'm a totally yeah, different person. I'm, I'm I am an asshole. So I'll, I'll own up to that shit. If I'm hungry, I'm, yeah, you know. I'm so imagine hungry. with kids, bro, who I don't have, yeah. who don't have nearly as much self-control or fucking um, perspective or consciousness that we have, bro. You and want me to fuck with a multiplication table and I'm hungry? Right, what the fuck? And this shit is just like like the like the, the, the bare necessities, right? Like yeah. you should be able to have food. You should be able to have shelter. But we literally this fucking government gives around gives away billions and billions of dollars of wasted food. So we gonna waste hella fucking food. Whole food's gonna throw hella shit out. All these fucking gentrified restaurants gonna throw hella food out. Nigga, it's illegal to get food away with no permit. <sighs> but we do it. Uh. Shit is illegal. <laughs> Niggas can literally pull up on us like where y'all shit at. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we exposing ourselves. No, fuck all PD. Oh, that option. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> it's late in here. Hey, yeah. how long have we been recording? I don't know. It's like 7.55, you feel me? Everybody's still in this motherfucker. Wow. That shit. Y'all ain't got tired of us? I would get tired of me. I'm like, bruh. Like, I get tired of listening to myself talk. I was much I'm like, damn, bro. Your voice hella ugly, bro. Like, come on. Come on. But I think uh, the next shit we really want to talk about, too, was just like, about Oakland politics, you feel me? Like, it's election year. Are y'all familiar with this, this shit right now? Like, election year right now. Yeah. Libby Schaff. Oof. Fuck Libby Schaff. Yeah, retweet that, bro. I'll say that again, bro. For real, Please. for real. But Libby Schaff over here really trying to, you know, get elected again, bro. And, like, I remember really being damn near right out here. And it was a Say Her Name protest, right? And Say Her Name was a protest that was organized by people in Oakland, you feel me? To, like, highlight the uh, brutality the police violence against black women, right? So oftentimes we hear Black Lives Matter. Yeah, say her name. I mean, yeah. I, I think so. I mean, everything started out. I don't start know. Out here. Did, that's you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, there was a say her name protest out here, right? Because oftentimes when we think about Black Lives Matter, the first people you think about is like black men. But we also know that black women be 
murdered, black trans women be murdered at the hands of the police, mm -hmm. right? So it's important to say, say her name to uplift like black women and that be, be murdered by the police, right? So we're having this protest out here, literally like right outside, you feel me? And uh, Libby Schaaf, she put a curfew ordinance out that you can't protest at That's nighttime. That's option. That's like the definition of option. What else are you supposed to organize, nigga? Like, she literally banned, and the, the very first time that she was enforced was when we were protesting for, like, black women, specifically. Right, so Libby Schaaf, she's always like, oh, I'm a feminist, like, but when we were protesting you know for black that women, white, though, she only right? cared about white women. Feel me? So it's like, Libby Schaaf really was like, bro, I was out there, that shit was mainly as fuck. I almost How you jail. a feminist and you don't, uh, fucking fire the niggas who uh, was raping that young girl. That's your trigger warning, you know? That's your content warning, that shit was foul. Not only did she not, she did not speak out against them niggas she at all. Promoted. She didn't have nothing to say. She tried to cover it up until she got, until the shit got OPD exposed. been on some foul shit. Fuck OPD, Been bro. on some foul For shit. For real. Since the beginning of time. Yeah, I mean, because the first police was slave patrollers, and then they came over to Oakland to do the same shit. Libby been on it. But yeah, if like she really just did that, did all that shit. You feel me? And then the whole like sex trafficking shit, right? Mm -hmm. Where OPD was literally sex trafficking an underage woman, like a right girl. out, right out a here, girl. A, a girl, girl. Like a, a girl, a girl, a girl. Yeah, not a woman. She was uh, underage. Three police she was chiefs underage. in nine days, and she's supposed to run the city of Oakland. But like, shouldn't we still be talking about that though? If like you really about. Feminism and liberation and equity and equality, shouldn't that still be on niggas' brains? Like, that's some shit we should not forget, right? But that shit is swept just under the rug. You know? So it's like, when you when we talk about this election season, it's like, bro, why the fuck would you vote for a person who covered all that shit up? If you can vote, you feel me? I ain't gonna say voting is some liberation shit because the fuck I'm supposed to vote, man, vote my way to freedom. I think political power comes out the barrel again. Shit. If I'm gonna be honest. So, but, I think Libby is one of those folks you really gotta judge by their actions. Cause but she'll she smile on your face, game. you know, and she'll get she'll you know, Steph Curry on a commercial. She'll, pull up she'll be out there, the like, doing all crazy. Yeah, you know, but at the I'm same Libby. time, putting in policies that, you know, disadvantage black folks. Not firing. Bro, uh, there was literally 14 pigs involved in OPD. Some of them still working. So what does that say? Promoted too. Jeez. Say that. You feel me? Like, so you can do all that shit, you can get promoted, do all that. Three police chiefs, how, how the fuck are you still mayor? In like, nine days, nigga. The, the, the shit is literally crumbling in front of you. You still but, have that, but that shows really how the police is an institution, right? So we're talking about good cop, bad cop, right? So you promote the next person in line, the next person in line is connected. You promote the next person in line, the next person in line is connected. You promote the next person in line, the next person line is connected. So all the motherfuckers had to go to where they appointed a city administrator. And now they got some white white person from Chicago as a head of chief of police. What the fuck niggas saying in Chicago? Like they over there doing fucking bait trucks and shit. Putting free Nikes out and fucking arresting niggas. <laughs> Nigga, like literally like fucking like, what do you call that shit? Like tempting the poor. <laughs> like we like, know you niggas ain't got enough. Come get it. Come on. Baiting niggas. That's sick. I'm not surprised though. It's white America for you. Fuck twelve. The niggas can't like. There's nothing that the police can do that surprises me, especially when it's in efforts of like oppressing and marginalizing black folks yeah. and enslaving black folks. There's nothing that the police can do to surprise me at this point. Mm -hmm. Nothing, bro, at all. I mean, it's like while well, we have private prisons now, right? Private prisons are now like, bro, like if you wanted to invest in private prisons, all y'all niggas can get on Robin Hood right now and invest in that shit. And the fucked up shit part would be like it's actually a good investment because ninety five percent of it has to stay. Niggas gonna stay in jail. They gonna stay in jail. Stay because ninety five percent of them have to be filled at all times. We gonna make sure of it, right? We so we talking sure. about all this wildfires and shit. Who's fighting the wildfires? Prisoners. Prisoners. Period. Bla black people. I, I don't know. Women, I know a bunch right? of niggas that's been in fire camps. And whenever when, when niggas was telling me all oh, niggas in fire camp when I was younger, I'm like, okay, that's like some gotta you know get out early type shit. I didn't know niggas was actually fighting fires with no training. Like, you just throwing a nigga out there like, yo, nigga, use this hose. Come on. Make you it happen. Like make it 8 o'clock right now. Y'all yeah. fucking with Hello Black Podcast? Yeah. I appreciate y'all. You feel me? I definitely appreciate y'all for the and listening to us. Bruh, Hello Black. Talk our shit. Hello Black is about us.
you feel me? Like, it might be us up here, but this shit is about us as a community, bro. Like, this shit ain't a bigger than us, you feel me? It's about all of us, you feel me? Because when it's time to ride, you feel me? You all gotta be ready to ride, you know what I'm saying? You feel me? We all gotta be educating ourselves. So I appreciate y'all for really pulling up on a Friday. You know what I'm saying? We out here drinking the and dog water. You know I'm what I'm grateful. Saying? I'm grateful for y'all fucking with us. For real, for real. It should make, it should make me happy. Don't. We're about to do this Q&A, but please don't ask no homophobic, transphobic, misogynistic ass question. Because you might get blended. <laughs> At this point, please don't ask us no shit like that. But we could do Q&A, whoever want to. AB, you want to facilitate this? For sure. That shit ain't gonna go that far. I was like, oh, we could do like yeah, raise we'll your just, hand we'll just repeat and you the question. The front or some shit. No. Nah, I got you. Oh yeah. Do you want to make like a little uh, a tiny line up here? If niggas fucking with it, if not, go down. Hello. Hello. No, that one is this one. This one. Let me take this. All right. Can you give it one more time, ladies and gentlemen? Hey. They said all the stuff that we were like, I always want to say that in the public, in front of white people. Right? Yeah. 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 Cause the white people here know, that's why they're here, it's called Hello Black, so yeah. Yeah, straight on. Y'all got questions though? Yeah, yeah, slide. You gonna go up here? I can repeat that. Yeah, what, you, what we gonna do? <laughs> y'all said fuck OPD, so what's up? What y'all gonna do? Bro, get rid of I'm a, I got this one, so you can use this one. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I think about that shit every day. Like, okay, so I talk all this shit about fuck the police, freedom niggas, da, da, da. But it's not just like I just want the police to be gone. I want everything that allows the police to function and that makes the police a necessity to be gone. So I feel like if like motherfuckers ain't poor, if we got mental health institutions, I feel like there won't be no need for them niggas. That's just my perspective. I don't know. That's like that could be some um, what they call the shit utopian perspective, but I don't think so. I feel like if the the the, um, the conditions that allow for the police to be a necessity are eradicated, which is like they don't exist anymore, I feel like there will be no need for the police. That's just how I look at it. Yeah. It's like if we invest the same money that is investing in. And educate and police, and we invested that money in the education. It's like, why don't we have fucking mental health counselors? Why doesn't everybody got food? You feel me? I think if we take that money away, but it's also like, I don't know, people. I think people be like, oh, what do we like? Who you gonna call if somebody gonna rob you? I've never called the police, nigga, a day in my life. I'm gonna like, call myself because I'm gonna handle my shit. Type, you feel me? Like, I'm some <laughs> real shit. Like, if some shit popped off, shit popped off before. You feel me? Who am I calling? I think about like my niggas. I swear to God, my niggas first. I ain't finna call 911. I'm finna call. Like, I'm finna call AB. I'm finna call Shira. You feel me? I'm finna call my auntie. You know what I'm saying? But, like, if shit really pop off, like, the first thing I don't think about, like, I think the only, the first time I called 911, I was like five. I thought it was a joke. Like, I dialed that shit 911. Like, they're like, 911, what's your emergency? I said, I ain't got none. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? But I think if we invest the money, you feel me, into like educational programs, like, bro, why is 5 0 roaming the street? Why don't we have social workers roaming the street? Why don't we have mental health therapists roaming the street? You feel me? Why don't we have teachers roaming the street? Why don't we have a fucking free food truck roaming the street? Bro, like, bro, if you hungry, you might get angry. Right, yeah. And if you angry, you might pop off on a motherfucker. I, I, for real, I gotta check myself. I'm like, damn, I need to eat before I pop off, because I ain't, you know. I ain't or, nigga, I need to talk that. to somebody before I pop off. I need to talk. Me like, you feel me? Like, like there was a lot of times where I felt like popping off, where I called my niggas, like, bro, what's going on? I gotta talk, like, let's talk. You feel me? So it's like, I can't I think, think of looking, one. Yeah, go ahead, my fault. Yeah, I just think about looking at alternatives and like, I feel like a lot of people in this room, like, well, we ain't calling 911 when shit really pops off. Like, we don't call 911 for advice. Like, if a barbecue is happening and people are making noise, you know what I'm saying? So I think it's about looking at as a collective. You know, when we talk about capitalism, we should think about other alternatives, right? So if we look at like Mandela Food Collective in the West. You feel me? That's like a, a socialist intervention. You feel me? Where it's it's not Safeway where you have one owner. It's all the people working are the owners. And then you don't don't just have white man a white man in the suit looking over everybody. You feel me? You have all the people are the workers, all the people are the owners. So I think like just looking at like bro, like what does it mean to look after each other? Like you feel me? It's like what does it mean to like you know not just be on your iPhone with your AirPods in and paying attention to shit. 
You know what I'm saying? Like if some shit pop off, I'm finna intervene. I fucking hate this shit where people be on their phones just video recording shit all the time. It's like intervene, bro. You see a black person being brutalized by the police, a black person being brutalized by a white supremacist. I ain't finna call 911, I'm finna call my niggas, or I'm finna just act, bro. Like, straight like that. I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm on a tangent, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> I, I felt you, nobody else did. Yeah, I appreciate you, that's why I that's, that's my brother, bro. Do we got any other questions? Yo, yeah, yo. Yeah. For real, I know y'all got questions, cause... Hey, AB, hey. pass to my nigga mine real quick, you know, that's the shit. Thank you. respect to the uh, position of mayor, you know, you speak about Libby Shaft not doing her, her do, you know, her beautiful job, but um, <laughs> do you have anyone that you would like to uplift to the community that would be? Yeah. <laughs> What's my, Cat Brooks? Cat Brooks. Cat Brooks. Cat Brooks, like, that's somebody you can just judge by their actions. Cat Brooks is hella in the field. I don't, when, when um, rest in peace to Nia Wilson. When, we, when they were organizing and marching for Nia's death, Cat Brooks was front line with this shit. Not in no fucking office, not doing interviews. She was front line with this shit, this as black women always are. Yeah. Front line with the shit. So Cat Brooks, I don't even believe in like, I don't think that like liberation is gonna come through the same system that's gonna enslave us. I've said that like 10 times today. And she don't either. I don't that's believe in that shit. That's what I'm saying. Like Cat Brooks is like a revolution, not reform motherfucker. I fuck with her the long way. And I ain't never voted a day in my life, but I'm for sure gonna vote for Cat Brooks, period. Yeah, and like part of her platform is divesting from OPD. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? That shit, that's dope. Like, yeah, we need. You ain't right, never right. heard a nigga say no shit like Whoever that. Whoever said that, you feel me? So it's like, but it's also hard when you have a radical politic like that to get elected. She should be the next Oka mayor. I'm my mama. You feel me? She should be. But if she isn't, it's not because she didn't win, she didn't run a real campaign. It's because she didn't have a democratic machine supporting her. When I talk about the democratic machine, I'm talking about millions and millions of dollars funding people. You feel me? Her shit is completely grassroots, completely in the field. Look at like the I budgets mean. between Libby and Kat. Like they're, you talking about millions of dollars and you talking about a hundred thousand. Like not hundreds of thousands. Like it's the, the mm -hmm. it's ridiculous. It's a step, right? So organizing locally is a step, you feel me? But it ain't finna free us all. Ain't shit, you know, like shit ain't gonna be perfect if she gets elected because we're still existing under still capitalism. System. Trump, that fucking orange motherfucker still finna be president. Jerry Brown, that old ass motherfucker, still for the be governor, or you know, I know it's election year and shit, but Jerry Brown fucking judge by Oakland, but that's a whole other story. Yeah. Straight like that. Gavin Newsom on some other shit too. Uh, any other questions? Yo, auntie, come in with that shit. I'm like, you know where I live. Nah. <laughs> Any more, any more. Huh? So y'all can't follow that. Yeah. She a, she a OUSD school teacher for 42 years, right? See, I know the history, like, for real. Yeah. You don't have to get your ass up, boy. This is about as far as it's going to go. Peace, everybody. I just wanted to ask about, like, even though this is stolen land, uh, even though these indigenous people that lived here before us were 
genocidally murdered by the 49ers and miners. That's another thing. Anyway, this, how do we use this land to produce food for our people? Like, how can we like, stop relying on these corporations to bring us food, but in reality, just produce our own food? Uh, and I wonder just what y'all think about that and how we do that in a way that's decolonized. Shit. In my mind, I'm thinking of like this plot that I got in North Oakland. That's like one thing I could think of, like using that space to grow fresh produce. I know AB has a food bank. I know that Blake. It's like a gardener for yeah, real, for real. I know that Blake is using um, resources at Cal Berkeley to create a garden. And it's just like, I, it's literally just like doing, like using the resources that we have and doing what we can to produce our own. That's That's how I see it. I think it's really building about building in this room. You feel me? It's like we all have different skills. You feel me? Different privileges, different resources. like resources yeah. and shit. So it's like I might not know shit about you know having some chickens, but somebody might know some shit about having some chickens. So I go over to your house to get my eggs instead of going to Safeway. But you know I got the spinach. You feel me? I got the hot sauce or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? But it's like looking to alternatives than capitalism, right? So it's looking like bread, like. Knowing our neighbors, you feel me? Knowing who's in this room is like, all right, we really don't, that's that's the shit that I really want to like get her at, is like, we don't gotta depend on nobody for it but ourselves and be like on some real shit. Like we can, like fuck a dollar, that's some dead slave masters, right? But how can we exchange our goods that we have, right? So if AB over here got tomatoes and lettuce and chicken, and I got, you know, some bread that I was making, you know what I'm saying? It's like, all right, yeah, the chicken might be a little bit more worth than the bread, so I'm gonna give you more bread. You feel me? You're gonna give me a little less chicken. But we just exchange. And we ain't thinking about Venmo. And I think that shit is good. I For real, like, I'm not even trying to be funny. Like, we thinking about different shit than the shit that we know. We ain't thinking about Cash App, we ain't thinking about technology. But what is that like day to day shit, that day to day interaction that we have with each other? And I think that shit is like good practice for like how we wanna live post revolution. If we are lucky, if we are um, lucky enough to live in this society post-revolution, right? Like, let's start practicing the things that we want to see, how we want to live after this revolution takes place as a part of, like, you know, that them socialist tendencies, right? Like, using all of our resources and, like... like uh, Collectivizing. Yeah, and, like, literally, like, living equity out every day, like, meeting each other where we are and giving what we can to each other's experience and each other's um, conditions. I think that's a way for me to get this shit started. Yeah. I think, I think one thing I want to talk about that we didn't talk about is like around community work is like the importance. You laughing? No. I'm tired of talking, nigga. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like actually building relationships with people. I know nah, what I'm saying. Like getting be. people to know, like that's one thing we didn't talk about that I know I wanted to uh, talk yeah, we about. Should, we should definitely speak on that because I for sure got something to add to that. I ain't gonna lie, bro. Like we be talking and shit and people be thinking we hella profound and I fuck with that, but you know, just because you good at talking on me, you should. No, fuck. Um, but I do hella fuck with relationship building. I remember we had a situation like a couple months ago where we had we were doing a breakfast program and somebody brought to my attention that like, yo, I understand y'all intention behind shit is like as far as like community building and like creating a safe space for people, but it don't feel like y'all interacting as much as y'all claim to be. And that shit really stuck with me. I'm like, damn, we really try to set this breakfast program up in a way that allows for us to like, if you look at me and Blake's tweets, if you look at our timelines, we talk about community building a lot. And for this person to bring to my attention that, yo, y'all niggas talk about community building, but no one spoke to me at this breakfast program. That just struck a chord in me like, damn, are we really setting the conditions for people to build and grow with each other, right? So that's why even when we came here, we were like, okay, we gonna have interaction, we gonna Q and A, we gonna have people coming up and talk. Because I think it's important for me, I grew up playing football and I can think of that team experience. When I got to know somebody, I can think of my roommate, right? My roommate was the person I was rocking for the hardest on the field because me and that person spent hella time together. We were going through our struggles together. We would come home, we were talking shit. And when you organize it as war, that's essentially what it is. It's a war against either a system, it's a war against people. And I think when you work in it feels like this, you have to build, you have to lock in with people. So even using this space, I don't know what we're gonna do after this me and this nigga get done yapping, but maybe y'all, you know, we might have a little mixture hour. I think whenever you're in a space like this, it's important that 
you talk to the people that you're fucking with. We really build, we, you know, like not just talk about building, not just the theory of building, but that we really use those actions to lock in with each other and get to learn about each other and really tap in. I think that's important. Yeah, because when I think about this breakfast program, I don't think about us as both like community activists. Like, this my nigga first. Like, before, before the podcast, before People's Breakfast open, like, this is my brother. You Facts. feel me? Yeah. And I think that's where I, what's important about it is like having that relationship. Because it's like, bro, I ain't finna go to war with you if I don't know shit about you. You talking about being in the trenches and shit, like supporting you, like, you know, doing some shit, you know, like like for real being in the field with it and I don't know shit about you. Like I ain't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so it's, I think it's important to build with people, you feel me, to understand like, like, bro, I've been in your grandma house, you know, even my great auntie house, you yeah. feel me? Like, you know my family, I know your family. Like, and building like that on some genuine level with each other, because I think in this, in this generation, it, it encourages us not to build like that. It encourages us like, all right, what's the next party, bro? All right, bro, what's next? Face filter is facial recognition, but that's a whole other story. You know what I'm saying? But I'll be using that filter too. I'll be looking, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, we all, you know, with the dog filter or whatever. <laughs> um, you feel me? But it's like, it's important to just get to know each other, build with each other, you feel me? Like, really straight up. Like, I want people, if you don't know, if you came here by yourself, I want you to know somebody at the end of the day. If you're trying to fuck with People's Breakfast Oakland, tap the fuck in with us and build with us, you feel me? And be on the field with us, you feel me? Like, we really trying to build. Facts. So. I think one, one more thing I want to say, we about to wrap this shit up, yeah. but I think oftentimes people look at Blake and ourselves when we put on platforms like this and think me and this nigga is something special and we not. Um, I think if you got a dream and you got like a, a movement that you want to push and you got a change that you're trying to make in this world, I think you should just take that first step. Like me and this nigga ain't no different than anybody in here. We got dreams, we got fears, we got all that shit. Like we are not no better than nobody in this room. So if you got any aspirations, any dreams, you should chase them motherfuckers. Yeah. Yeah. Hella black. Like, we really, like we really started this shit over some dog water. <laughs> like drinking, like nigga, I like, really, we really, was really in the West, saying? like really at the studio. Just like, all right, we see people outside who need food. I was like, bro, we're like, we gotta feed people. You feel me? And it was like, it really started like that over this motherfucker. It's Kanye. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you could build, bro. We ain't, we ain't no. I think times you put like, people put like capes on on activists, like put a superhero. Oh, like oh, they're they're doing some crazy, like with some regular ass motherfuckers. If you know me, you know I'm a regular ass motherfucker. Like I do. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's important. If you got dreams, if you want to do some shit, you feel me? Do that shit, bro. Build with the people, you feel me? Connect with the people you know. Thank y'all for coming. Hello, it's Hella Black, episode 23. Live in this motherfucker. Thank y'all for fucking with us, you know. If we have another episode, y'all gonna fuck with us. If we have another episode, we can run live with Yeah. I appreciate y'all.